Hi and welcome again to my Physics Online video lecture series. In today's video we're going to be discussing energy in inductors. Um, so to kind of set the stage for this we can um, remind ourselves of power. Remember that power in general, um, power is defined as work per unit time or in other words energy per unit time or change in energy per unit time, something like that. Um, and so ohmic power was given by I times delta V, current times voltage. And, you know, we typically then kind of put it in terms of something else like, oh, say, um, I squared R or delta V squared over R. Um, remember also that for a capacitor, so we could call this maybe a capacitative or capacitive power, um, that what you get is um, essentially you, you do energy over time, so delta U over delta T, and that ultimately um, U was one half uh, Q delta V, so we're doing that over time, and so this ends up looking like one half of I delta V. In other words, the um, power being delivered via the capacitor maybe looks like half of the power that we were getting for ohmic power. Okay, well for an inductor, um, what we have is um, that the uh, um, EMF induced is negative L times delta I over delta T. And and that is for essentially the equivalent of this delta V term. Um, so if we wanted to uh, basically do um, uh, uh, voltage, uh, uh, power, excuse me, we expect power to look like one half I times L or one half I um, delta I delta over delta T um, times L. And so multiply both sides by this delta T term to get the energy. U is equal to P delta T means that the energy stored should look like one half I squared L, or one half Li squared. Um, and so that is the energy being stored by an inductor. Please note that I have kind of um, stealthily here taken an absolute value for the power um, by basically doing this. So that's why we don't have a minus sign here. So the energy is one half Li squared, just as for the capacitor, we could um, change the capacitor's energy, U, um, from uh, uh, one half Q delta V. Uh, we could change it into a um, essentially like a Q squared over C times a half. Um, so for the capacitor, we're storing we're storing energy by charge, and it's one over this uh, capacitance property basically of the capacitor. For the inductor, we're storing it in current, and it's one half of essentially this parameter that defines for us um, the inductor times the current squared. Okay, there's another um, step that we would want to kind of undertake in this discussion. So let's go to our pair of parallel plates and say, okay, we're looking here at um, the amount of energy being stored. So I have basically like a plate here and I have basically like a plate here. And these two plates are each charged and that is essentially what's getting me my energy. Well, I can also define a sort of energy per unit volume. So volume enclosed uh, would be equal to the separation distance D. 
times the area A of each plate. So volume enclosed would be D times A, essentially. And so I can describe a new parameter called energy density. So how much energy per unit volume. Um, so energy density, we use a lowercase u. And the energy density, lowercase u, is defined as energy, uppercase u, per unit volume. Okay, so that defines it for any system. For the capacitor, so capacitor, uh, what we end up getting here is U is one half Q squared over C. And C is epsilon or epsilon naught, depending on if we got a dialectic or not, times A over D. So if I want little u, I'm taking one half q squared over c, and now I'm dividing it by um, the volume. So this this over c term, this is over epsilon naught a over d, and now down here I have the um, volume, which is a times d. And so when I combine all of that, I end up with one half um, the uh, C term ends up looking like uh, this distance and this distance cancel. So the C term gets rearranged into the denominator as epsilon naught A. So this would be my little u. Oh, sorry, epsilon uh, Q squared over A. But this right here just is how we define sigma squared. And from Gauss's law, um, so Gauss's law says that E should look like sigma over epsilon naught. So sigma squared is equal to E epsilon naught. And so my little u uh, sorry, is E times epsilon naught quantity squared. My little u is sigma squared, that's E times epsilon naught, both squared, times a half divided by epsilon naught. And so I can cancel one of the epsilon naughts, and I'm left with little u is equal to one half of epsilon naught E squared. So a capacitor, therefore, is storing its energy in the form of its electric field. This also relates electric field to um, energy, for what it's worth. Now, for an inductor, um, typical inductor, what you have is a geometry like this. It's essentially a solenoid. But this geometry just is the geometry of essentially a cylinder. So I have a cylindrical volume, and the cylindrical volume, V, would look like essentially the area A times the height. And so little u has become 1 half L I squared divided by area times height. Um, and so basically, now we ask what is L for this um, this capacitor, and, and what is I for this? Excuse me, for this solenoid. Well, we know that the B field inside of a solenoid looks like mu naught times little n times I, and therefore I squared could be taken to be B divided by mu naught little n. So the current squared term, therefore, is magnetic field squared times length divided by mu naught times number of turns. Um, and then, likewise, the inductance, self-inductance of a solenoid we found previously was mu naught n squared uh, times the 
essentially area, this right here is my area, A, um, divided by the length, L. Again, this right here is your length, L. Um, I said A times H here. If we use the length, this becomes A times L. Um, so let's combine these uh, into this uh, equation here. So little u has become 1 half, and then L is mu naught n squared A over little l. Uh, and then I squared is B L over mu naught n quantity squared. And then we're dividing the entire thing by A times H, which is A times L. Okay, so now let's look at like terms and cancel them. There's an A here and there's an A here. There's an N squared here. This is actually an N squared. There's a mu naught here. There's a mu naught squared here. So they can't do much about that. This L comes down here to give us an L squared. And so with L squared, we can kind of like cancel these two L's. And so by the time you've finished all those cancellations, what you're left with is energy density is one half. Um, and then there's a B squared left over on top and there's a mu naught left over on bottom. So that's the energy density for an inductor. And so inductors store energy in their magnetic field. So to summarize what we've said so far, um, let's uh, maybe do like capacitor uh, versus inductor. So capacitor, inductor. And we have energy, which is uh, capital U. We have energy density, which is lowercase u. Um, and so uppercase U for a capacitor is 1 half Q squared over C. For the inductor, this energy is 1 half L I squared. Energy density, lowercase u, is equal to the 1 half epsilon naught E squared. And this epsilon naught can be replaced by kappa times epsilon naught if you put a dielectric in it. So you could include a factor of kappa here if you desire. And then for the inductor, it's 1 half of the magnetic field squared divided by the permeability constant. So inductor stores energy in its magnetic field via current. Capacitor stores energy in its electric field via charge. And so that's it for today's um, video. Oh, I should label this as energy density. And we could include that the energy density is the energy per unit volume. Okay, so now that really is it for today's video. Uh, hope you learned something from it, and thanks for watching.